Welcome to the Dog Liaison Podcast. I'm your host, Jenna. On this podcast, we are taking on the dog training industry and deconstructing what it means to train a dog. In fact, I believe only you are the expert in understanding and caring for your dog, not some magical dog whisperer. And with a lot of context and some coaching, you can realize your expertise in supporting your dog. And so without further ado, let's get into the episode. Hello, friends. We are talking about how love is not enough to treat your dog's anxiety. You may need a special thing if you actually want to make it through your dog's anxiety. If you really want to play the long game, loving your dog is just the starting point. And this conversation was actually sparked by my good friend Tara over at Send Dog Fearless Grooming. Tara and I are really good friends. And a couple of weeks ago, she posted a really good slide where I can't remember all of like the nitty gritty words that she used, but it was basically just like, love's not going to be enough to get your dog to be comfortable being groomed with you. Because one of the things that we hear as guardians and as trainers and in the dog's fear is like, oh, I love my dog so much and he's my heart and joy and I would do anything for him. And I just love him so much. And that's beautiful and wonderful. And I want to celebrate you and celebrate you loving your dog because God knows there are plenty of guardians who are not loving their dogs as much as they should. Okay, I appreciate your love. However, if your dog has an anxiety disorder, if your dog is triggered constantly and you are having to rearrange your lifestyle, rearrange your day-to-day activities to accommodate your dog, Love is only the beginning. Like love is the starting point. And in fact, if you really want to get it out to the end of this, if you really want to make it to the end of your dog's recovery journey, if you really want to live a sustainable, healthy life where you were changing your dog's perceptions of the triggers, changing your dog's perception of his lifestyle, love is not going to be enough. You loving your dog is not going to cut it. What you're actually going to need And the guardians who are going through the recovery journey will tell you this. What you're actually going to need is discipline. And I want to be very clear. I'm not saying you'll need to discipline your dog. I'm saying you're going to need discipline within yourself. Because motivation is going to be like a roller coaster. There are some days that you're going to be super motivated. And other days that you're not going to be motivated at all. You're going to go through an emotional roller coaster on this journey. And... There are going to be days that you feel like you are flying high and you're winning everything at life. And then there are going to be other days that you feel like you're seriously like you just want to crawl into bed and just give up. And the thing that's going to bring you back to action is not really your love for your dog. Not really. The thing that will bring you back to action is a discipline and commitment to the end game. You may need a couple of other things. Namely, a commitment, especially and even when motivation is fleeting, you're going to need to have a sustainable routine. Because one of the things that I see a lot, and I, I love my guardians, I take care of them. They're my people, right? I love them. But one of the things that I see is they join the RRP. They're super ambitious. They finally have hope. That's one of the things I hear when they join the RRP is like, oh my gosh, I am hopeful. And I love it. And they just like dive headfirst into the curriculum, right? And they just like go ham. And I'm like, okay, you know, maybe don't go as intense because we're playing the long game here. And if you jump in ham, I don't know how sustainable that routine is. What's going to happen when you run into a hiccup? Is it going to feel like you've all of a sudden slammed on the brakes? You've been moving really, really, really fast. And then you just just stop. That's not healthy. So, really, what we need to be doing is committing to discipline and committing to a routine for ourselves. I know that discipline has like a really bad connotation. I get that. But uh, hear me out on here. I'm really just talking denotatively. Okay. I mean, in like the truest sense, you're going to need to be committed and rigorous with your schedule and with your routine. And you're going to need to anticipate. That while you might be hopeful and ambitious and excited to train and work with your dog today, a month from now, you may not have that. You may not have that same drive. 
And are you still going to wake up and do the training plan and execute the training plan? Are you still going to commit to reflecting the data? Because that's the other thing. A lot of times people go, okay, well, I can't do everything on my list. So I'm just going to pick and choose which things I want to do. But that's not helping you in the long run either. Think about if you go, if you work out, right? I don't know about you. I love lifting. It's one of my favorite things. I don't know. I don't talk a lot about it on this channel, but I love lifting, right? And to me, there have been phases in my lifting journey where I would go to the gym and I'd work really hard and I would be killing it. But then I'd come home and I'd eat like crap and I wouldn't eat my protein intake and I wasn't eating enough vegetables and I was just eating it like crap. And even as much as I love lifting, even though it was one of my favorite things, I looked forward to it every single day, inevitably, because the way I was fueling myself at home or lack of fueling, that started interfering with my workouts. And my workouts inevitably, as much as I love them, turned into crap and they were not effective. It was not necessarily a waste of time, but it was not a conducive use of my time, right? Hey there, Dog Guardian. It's me jumping in to ask you if you would not mind, please leave a review if you're enjoying this show. It helps us tremendously in the algorithm. We would really appreciate it. And most importantly, please share this with a friend. Either post on your IG stories and make sure that you tag us so that we can celebrate with you or share it directly with a friend through DM or email and just let them know, hey, this episode made me think of you and you really should listen to it. Thank you so much for your support and let's get back into the episode. That's how you want to think about if you start nitpicking, right? If you like are going ham and then you decide, oh crap, I need to slam on the brakes. I'm just going to stop tracking my data. I'm just going to stop logging. I'm just going to stop doing X, Y, Z. And I'm only going to do that. Inevitably, that's going to catch up to you. Inevitably, you're going to start running into more hiccups. You may not see it right away. But you're going to start coming back to me. And this is what happens with my clients sometimes is they come back to me and they say, Jenna, I don't know why we've slowed down so much momentum. And, you know, I'm just feeling really frustrated. I'm feeling really exhausted. And da, 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 da. And I say, cool. Can I see your training log? And they look at me like, so that's one of the reasons why it's so important that whatever routine you are setting up right now, you see it as a sustainable option. You see yourself being capable of doing it forever, even and especially when your motivation is fleeting. And that, my friends, is far more required than just loving your dog. Loving your dog is the starting point. I can't tell you how many applicants we get to the RP that the very first thing they say is, I just love my dog so much. And that's beautiful and that's wonderful. And I'm happy to hear it. And also we're looking for some other things, right? If I just let every single person in who said they love their dog into the RP, we would have 80 million people in the RV and it just wouldn't be as wonderful of a community and a high caliber of a community as it is. All right, my friends, how did this resonate with you guys? A Hopper said, I compare it to extreme diets. It's easy on the first days, but not as sustainable as long term. Yeah. Has anyone ever tried keto before? Shoot. I am really impressed by the people who say they do keto like for years on end. I'm like, damn, dude, I don't know if I could do that. That's an intense lifestyle, my friends. So yeah, we're really looking for what can we do long game. I'll see you then. Bye guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dog Liaison Podcast. If you did, it would help us tremendously if you subscribe to the show, left a review and or shared with a friend. You can either post on your Instagram stories, make sure you tag me if you do, or send it directly through an email or a DM straight to a friend, letting them know, hey, this episode really made me think of you. Info on how to work with me and the Dog Liaison team is linked in the description box, or you can go to getacondog.com. We look forward to having you in the next episode. Until then, give your dog a treat for me and we'll talk soon.